now friends and foes, another little human interest item. A father out in the wild and woolly uh, Midwest was brought before the judge this morning, charged with uh, spanking his 18-year-old daughter. His honor dismissed the charge when Daddy explained that he did it to prevent her from taking part in a sit-down strike. And here's a tip for the police. The booking offices of our distinguished racehorse expert, Mr. George Crandall, have been moved just around the corner to 7820 Vista Street, where you may still place your bets. Well, that is, uh, if you can get in. And that, ladies and gentlemen, wind up another news and gossip broadcast by your columnist, commentator, Swifty Taylor of the Globe Times. And uh, thank you. The sound of the gong will indicate exactly five seconds before 7.45 p.m. This is station KGT atop the Globe Times building. And now, through the courtesy of Branson Bakeries, Incorporated, we bring you the golden voice of that great lover of the air lake, Signor Romeo Casanova, with some new love ballads written especially for him and dedicated to his millions of radio sweethearts. The title of his first number is, Then You Remember Me. that cauliflower canary too? Ah, uh, Julie, are you going to make a career out of sewing on a button? After all, Mr. Taylor, I'm your secretary, not your valet. Never mind the back talk. Just step on it. Well, I may have been wrong for years, but I've always thought that this was the office of the nation's foremost radio commentator. So he thinks. Well, I get it. Just a tailor shop. Ha! There's one for your columns, Swifty. Yeah? It's cranks like that from guys like you that would ruin columns like mine. You shouldn't ignore a bit of wit. What? Wit. What wit? I'm ill from laughing. <laughs> well, after all, I'm only a reporter. You said it. Well, I gotta run along and turn in my story. See you at the fight, Swifty. Okay, Jimmy. Where's your boss, Alice? In his private office. That's swell. I got something to tell his secretary. What is it? This. Jimmy Moran, what if Swifty and Julie looked out here and caught you? Well, do them good. Set them an example. They're crazy about each other and don't even know it. I know how to help them. How? Mental suggestion. Very simple. You pretend you're Julie, I pretend I'm Swifty. Like this. Your coat, master. What'd you do? So the button on the coat or the coat on the button? Hey, what kind of thread is that? I didn't have any thread. I used yarn. Now, you don't knit buttons on coats. You think it'll hold? I have my doubts, but you can only learn by trying. You know, as a button knitter on her, you're a great little secretary, Julie. And the next time, don't try to leave the elevator until they get the door open. Relax. You're in my This concludes another program of love songs by Signor Romeo Casanova, the great lover of the air lake, brought to you by Branson Bakeries Incorporated. And now, as usual, the Signor will personally say good night to his sweethearts all over the world, including you and you and only you. All right. Good night, sweetheart. Sweetheart. Yes, dear. What'd you say? Ah, uh, skip it. Ladies and gentlemen, as our city election is only a few days away, this station has impartially accorded various candidates the opportunity to use our facilities in expressing their views. Last night, Mr. Henry L. Martin, K.
candidate for the important post of district attorney, spoke from this station. Tonight, you will listen to his political opponent, Mr. Robert E. Southern, our present district attorney, who will speak to you from his office in the city hall. Take it away, Mac. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our district attorney, Robert E. Sutherland. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I have neither the time nor the desire to mince words tonight. I ask for re-election in order to continue my work of ridding this city of its human rats, its crooks, grafters, gamblers, and racketeers. I have been relentless in my efforts to stamp out vice of every kind. As you know, already I have put behind prison bars 12 public enemies and I am about to crack down on number 13. I'll bet the 13th man is shaking in his shoes. I wonder who he'll be. Nobody knows but the DA himself. There are a number of men who can qualify for number 13 on my list. Among them is none other than Henry L. Martin, my unworthy opponent, who wants my office for the sole purpose of turning this city over to the underworld. Wow, that guy's throwing dynamite bombs. I better see if the boss is getting this. Another who can qualify is Louis Christie, one of the most pernicious criminals in the city. Ex-druggist, former bootlegger, who has promoted himself to nightclub owner and big shop leader of vice. And also among those eligible for a prison cell is George Cramp, who has robbed our citizens of many thousands of dollars by his crooked gambling machines and phony horse race tip sheets. Still working? No, oh, it's not too hard. Gee, I'll be so thrilled to get away from here. Thrilled? Why, a newspaper's the last word in thrills. Birth, death, success, failure. I wasn't cut out for it. I'm a homebody. Gee, I'll love it, planning for Jimmy. First, we'll have a budget. So much for life, so much for gas. Yeah, I read all that, too. From domestic science to the divorce court. Julie. Only kidding, Alice. You've got a fine boy. But treat him like we do our bosses. Let him think they do all the thinking. You've never been in love. Oh, I've had measles. And another possibility is none other than Dr. Randolph Gorman, whom I threw out of his job as head of the county hospital. The newspapers called his crime mismanagement. I call it graft. Cut that off. Yes, Mr. Baldwin? Joe, have you got that political shindig at City Hall well covered? I sure have, boss. Good. Oh, page one for a makeover. I'm going to the fight. I'll check with you later. It's the time of the fight. Throughout my term of office, I've been hampered in my campaign and efforts to stamp out vice and crime by many unjust and undignified attacks on me by the Globe Times and its publisher, Andrew Ball. Nevertheless, I will continue to fight. That's going too far. I haven't hampered him. I've helped him when I thought he deserved it. Don't let it get under your skin, boss. It's the first chance he's had to get back at you. Let's get a load of it. Yes, my friend, 13 will be a very unlucky number for someone tomorrow. Because I shall go before the grand jury and start him on his way to the state penitentiary. Another good story, anyhow. See you at the fight. Right. Hey, yo. Stick around a while. I may have some work for you. How about you and I stepping out for dinner tonight? It's a miracle. I've worked for him for six months and it's the first time he's invited me to dinner. Stick around till I get back. Call that an invitation? Well, it'll do until a real one shows up. Gosh. I'm gonna go home and dress for the occasion. Alice. Stick around like it back. I mean, look after things. You like him a lot, don't you? Behave. He might not know me and take me to a swell place. Another miracle. The miracle will be if he remembers asking you. Mm -hmm. Don't be a possessiveness. very subtle in your speech tonight. I had no intention to be. I think you'll regret that little attack on the Globe Times. You've been attacking me for months. Don't forget, Sutherland, my paper can break you. You haven't had much luck so far. Well, maybe you'd like to bring me before your precious grand jury. If I do, I'll make it stick. Now, 
folks, while we're waiting for the first part of the evening, I have a treat for you. Here comes Swifty Taylor of the Globe Times. How about a few well-chosen adjectives, Swifty? I have a heart, and I just finished a broadcast. Remember your duty to your public, Swifty. <laughs> Come on, give. Well, good evening, folks. Ah, uh, this is the great age we live in. Nowadays, you don't have to turn on the vacuum cleaner to get the dirt. You merely dial the radio to the voice of Swifty Taylor, which is coming to you now direct from the ringside, where the pugilists are climbing the ladder of success round by round. Ah, uh, folks, what a shame you can't see the look of reproval on the face of my side, Kate Jimmy Moran, also of the Globe Times, as he gives me the birdie by remote control. Ah, uh, well, folks, the fighters here tonight aren't all in the ring. Oh, unless my eyes deceive me, there's Stella Leroy, that red-hot torch singer with her imitation ermine cape, accompanied by Jack Winslow, that millionaire boyfriend of hers, who tosses his money around like it was confetti. Ah, and there's fighting Bob Sutherland, our daring D.A., that titanic terror of the underworld, uh, if any. Yes, indeed, folks, have that speech the D.A. made an hour ago. He reminds me of Daniel in the lion's den. All around him are the lions whose tails he pulls. A few seats away, ah, there's Mr. Louis Christie. He called Mr. Christie an ex-druggist, a uh, former bootlegger, a nice fellow. Well, Louis, the DA sure got a lot off his chest tonight, huh? Yeah. A nice room for a lily. What a night for big shots, folks. A few seats away from me is my boss, Mr. Andrew Baldwin, publisher of the Globe Times and owner of radio station KGT. A few seats away, there's George Crandall. The DA said that he was robbing us poor folks with his crooked slot machines and his tip sheets, remember? And there's Dr. Gorman. A familiar fight physician who recently resigned from the county hospital, assisted by the DA, according to Mr. Sutherland's broadcast tonight. Well, folks, fight's about to begin, so I'll turn the microphone over to your regular broadcaster who uh, incidentally gets paid for it. This is the voice of Swifty Taylor, who gives you the high up on lowdowns. Take it away, Ed. Thank you, Swifty Taylor. The fighters are coming into the ring, folks. I'll let you listen to the fight announcer. Change these seats. I don't want to sit behind the DA. What's the matter, honey? Has he got something on you? Nobody thinks he has something on everybody. Hey, if your face was a gun, somebody would be dead. Oh, I get it now. The DA. Ain't that the guy that gave you the rap for five years for cracking the safe, Eddie? Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Not now. Not here. No. Kids up in the gallery throwing things again. I see BB shot. Lucky person to pop off it. These kids must be reforming. on this story, Moran. Okay. Better play up Sutherland pretty strong in your column tomorrow morning. Right. What was the cause, Doc? Looks like the heart. Come on, Jimmy. Julie! You look so pretty, I didn't know you. Is that a compliment or a slam? Now, don't tell me you doll up like that for a man you don't care about. <laughs> I refuse to answer. Oh, Julie. I hope he... <laughs> hey, what's the matter? Oh, Julie, isn't love wonderful? It must be. Ah, careful. Don't splash the new furniture. Isn't Jimmy grand? Mm -hmm. He's elegant. Mr. Baldwin gave us a hundred dollar check for a wedding present. Well, what are you crying about? Isn't that enough? I'm silly. <laughs> you're sweet. <laughs> Don't be late tomorrow night. You know, you're my only bridesmaid. You bet. I'll be there on time if I have to crawl. Dragging swiftly by the hair. <laughs> Alice, scram. I was just scramming, Mr. Taylor. Anything 
I can do? No. Bob Sullivan just kicked off. Swifty. Heart attack. Where did he die? A fight. The old heart just stopped, that's all. Well, no wonder. After the way you and Balls and the paper have been writing him lately. All in the game. A better with the sweet. <laughs> Remember our profession. That's all, Ryan. Good night. Well, I guess I may as well go too, Tom. I've phoned in everything on the story I can get. Well, that's just a case of heart failure. That's all you can say. Yeah, I guess so. Well, see you in a couple of weeks. So long, Tom. So long, Jimmy, and uh, congratulations and good luck. She's a fine girl. Thanks, Tom. Good night. Good night. Yeah? Oh, hello, Coroner. What? Why, for the love of Pete, you... Yeah? Say, listen, Doc. Doc, don't breathe a word of this to anybody, especially the papers. No. Yeah, I know, I know. But listen, hold everything, hold everything back and let my boys get a break on it. Yeah, all right, I'll be right over. Then. What gives out? Do I smell news? No, that's just formaldehyde. Sure too bad about the DA, wasn't it? It sure was. Hey, can't you cops find enough trouble without hunting for it with a microscope? <laughs> I'm just watching some public enemies. Why don't you pinch them? Wish we could. Here, have a look. Boo! What's that thing in there with the long horns and legs? One of our best friends. He helps to keep us alive and well. Well, the old so-and-so. Who'd have thought it? Well, you can have him. He scares me. Hey, you! Give me that. Well, what is it? That's a needle dipped in curare. That's swell. Now, what's curare? That, my bright plumage pal, is the dope the little melee headhunters put on the end of the poison dart. And very efficient, too. Jimmy, what's the hurry? I gotta see a flea about a dog. <laughs> Here, read that. Oh, so now he's a splendid man, a courageous fighter, a champion of law and order, a paragon of civic virtue. Of course he was. Then it's a wonder you and the paper didn't hand him a few bouquets while he could still smell them. Politics, my beauteous one. You wouldn't understand. Do you? Don't pin me down. I'm gonna bust in on the air with a flash announcement. Hello. Oh, hello, Jimmy. Swifty's on the air now. But I can't take him a message. Jimmy Moran, such language. Ooh. What? All right. Yes. Yes. All right, Jimmy. I'll take it right in. Dr. Randolph Gorman, the medical examiner for the State Boxing Board, who's on duty at the fights, pronounced death due to heart failure. Just a moment, folks. Exclusive. A bombshell. I've just received astonishing but authentic information that District Attorney Sutherland did not die of heart failure. He was murdered. The broken point of a thorn, dipped in curare, a deadly poison used by Asiatic savages and headhunters, was found embedded in Sutherland's neck. Learn more details of the murder by reading the Globe Times and listening in on my next regular broadcast. This is Swifty Taylor signing off. Good night, all. Did you get that, boss? Get what? The DA didn't die of heart failure. He was murdered by a poison dart. I just put a flash on the air. How did you find that out? Well, Jimmy Moran phoned in. He knows it out at headquarters. Knows it out? Yeah. O'Hara was trying to soft pedal it. Well, 
We'll throw plenty of harpoons into the department about that. Yes, boss. Joe, hold everything. There'll be an extra coming up. Sutherland was murdered. Check with the city room. Right. Well, I think this calls for a little salary sweetener for Jimmy Moran. Well, boss, he can sure use it. Well, I hope the DA won't hold it against me for all the things I wrote about him. It's all a part of the game. Keeps the administration on his toes. Are we still going to ride the administration? No, I think we'll bury the hatchet. In the DA's grave, so to speak. Well, that's one way to put it. Can you think of uh, any way to find out who the 13th man was to be? Afraid not. What a story that would make. <laughs> Wouldn't it? Look at my hat. What are you doing around here this hour of night anyway? Starving. Why don't you do your starving at home? Because there's too much food in the icebox. Come on, come on. I'll send you home in a taxi. You'll send me home in nothing. Uh, th then you would need a taxi. Listen here, Swifty Taylor. You promised to take me out for a bite to eat, and you're going to do it, or I'll sue you for breach of promise. Say, that's right, I remember. So what kind of a secretary are you anyway? Why don't you remind me? <gasps> oh. uh, let me take a five spot, will you? It's true, even when I'm talking to the moon above. My topic of conversation is you and love. I'm shouting it everywhere that I go. Oh, oh. if so, even when I'm talking. Hey. How's the family, Tony? Ah, she does that. Last a week, you have an order. What do you call me? Your color? The bungalow from uh, heaven. <laughs> How many bambinos have you got now, Tony? Thirteen. Thirteen. Well, that's an unlucky number this week. Oh, no, not, oh, not for me, Mr. Taylor. I like it, a bambino. Hey, what do you want? I'll have I'll order later. It's when I keep talking of the honeymoon to be. My topic of conversation is you and me. Sorry, I didn't bring my typewriter. What coffee king is going to be crowned? Crown Give me a word. Slave. Crowned when his wife finds him holding hands with a manicurist, Louis Crispies, instead of at the palace barber shop. My topic of conversation is you. I see Mrs. William Stanton Bridges III is on a diet again. Champagne and caviar. Poor thing. Hello, Swifty. Well, Romeo Casanova. As big as life, and that's plenty big. Uh, uh, sit down, Romeo. Thanks, Swifty. Uh, you entertain Mr. Walters. Uh, I'll see you all later. Oh, sure, anything for a friend. Do you put the feedback on here off, Miss Walters? Not yet. Do you? Sure, I just finished, and it's great. Yeah, I buy a drink, but, but it's bad for me pipes. You see, I gotta stay in shape. I run to gymnasium. Doesn't that interfere with your singing? Oh, no, just a change. You see, us artists gotta have recreation. So I play in rare wrestlers and fighters. You are, first of all. Say, you might need some strong guys sometime to help you move or something. Well, if you do, just uh, give me a buzz. Thanks, I'll remember that. Well, hi, Lloyd. Hello, Swifty. Having a good time? Oh, yeah, yeah. In a big way. Big Ma Taylor. Did you hear the crack he made about us at the fights tonight? I want to see that guy. He can't insult American womanhood on the radio and get away with it. I'm going after him and tell him off. Sit down, Jack. Don't mingle with Swifty over there, because the best you'll get out is the worst. How about having a little drink with me? Well, I've done that before. Come on. Hello.
Hello, Al. Hey, Gus. Hey, Shorty. What's it be? Plain water. Don't laugh. It's an idea. I think I'll surprise the old stomach with one myself. Bob Sutherland, may his soul rest in peace. What's wrong? He's a good friend of yours, wasn't he? I wouldn't say that. After all the times he's put the heat on me, pulled in my boys, closed this place up. Well, he won't bother you anymore. All right. Here's to the DA. Enough to kick off in the prime of life, though. The way you say that, it don't sound so nice. What's wrong with it? I don't know. I just don't like it. It's too bad. And another thing. That leg man of yours, Moran. He was in here tonight and talking kind of screwy. Like I had something to do with the DA dying of heart failure. He didn't die of heart failure. He was murdered. Murdered? And you think that I had something to do with it? He burned you in a speech tonight. You didn't waste any time getting out of the fight stadium. I'm in business, and I can't afford to get mixed up in anything like that. Forget it, Louis. Thanks for the drink. See you later. Do you want to hear how I became a great singing voice? Well, I'll tell you. Up to about five years ago, I had a voice like a crow. But I'm out in L.A. when I got matched with a big farmer from Iowa. Silk City, Iowa, too. But I'm out of condition, see? And he gave me this. And I did something to my vocal cord, and that's how I became a great singer. You think it'll help me any? Oh, I'm sorry, Swifty. But I was just telling the kid here how I got a great singing voice. That's OK, Kathy. You didn't hit her any. Good night. Good night. Now do we eat? Hey, eat. Oh, eat, sure, yeah, yeah. Where's Tony? Pardon me a minute, Tony, will you? I'll be back later. All right, baby. Listen, wise guy. If you know what's good for you, you lay off those cracks about me and Miss Leroy. Say, now, wait a minute, Winslow. A little publicity might build Miss Leroy up to a real attraction. Why, you... Woo! <gasps> Come on, come on, let's get out of here. Come on. Want onions on those hamburgers? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pile them on. How about you? Nope. They won't mix with those champagne cocktails. What champagne cocktails? The ones we didn't have. And to think I got all dressed up for this. Joe. Give me a rewrite on the election story. Jimmy, you usually have an angle on every killing. Have you got one on this? Well, just a wild hunch, Mr. Baldwin. Uh, I'm on the way to run it down now. I may even have something for the Bulldog of the night edition. And then, the big honeymoon. Good luck and congratulations. Thanks, Mr. Baldwin. Coming to the wedding? Can't make it, Jimmy. Sorry. So am I. So, uh, stop in at the cashier's office on your way out and pick up your vacation check. And from now on, your salary will be $10 a week more. Thanks again. That's swell. Here, use that. That's no good. Boy, what a day this has been. But I got a lead on the killing, Swifty. Let's fill it. And I got a $10 raise. Boy, what a honeymoon this will be. Whose honeymoon? Has it escaped that gigantic intellect of yours that Jimmy is getting married tonight? And your best man? Don't be a sap. He sticks on this story. You can postpone the wedding. Say, my wedding's the most important thing in the world to me, and I put it off twice now on account of you. Then once more won't hurt. Yes, it will. It's bad luck to postpone a wedding. You'll keep out of this. The only thing he cares about weddings is to make people sore by announcing them too soon. He can't announce this one too soon. Well, so long. I got a lot of stuff to look up. You stay on this story. Mm -hmm. Romantic as a turnip. I got a check for Jimmy for a couple of hundred bucks. Another one? What do you mean, another one? 
You touched your bank account for 200 the day you found out he was going to be married. Oh, uh, well, uh, make it 50. Now, uh, you'd better come clean. I never saw a more perfect setup for a guilty man. Crazy talk, O'Hara. Why should I kill the DA? Oh, there are plenty of whys. Well, you hated him. He interfered with your rackets. He kept you and your mob in hot water constantly. He was about to send you up to the penitentiary. Oh, he'd done the same to dozens of others. Yes, and what's more, you sat near him at the fights. And then you lambed out of there in a mighty big hurry. I'm dying laughing. Louis, you were once a druggist. Sure. I was once a baby, too. So I heard. What's being a druggist got to do with it? Well, now, I'll just explain it to you. It means that you know all about poisons and how they act. Certainly, Lieutenant. Every doctor knows about poisons. You can't get out of this, Dr. Garman. Well, you had every reason in the world to kill Sutherland. He threw you out of your soft job, and he was about to throw you into prison. But that doesn't mean that I killed him. Well, even your duties at the fight kept you close to him all the time that he was alive. And what's more, you examined him after he collapsed. Purely a situation of circumstance. It means nothing. Except it gave you a perfect opportunity to slip the poison into his skin while you were handling him. But my dear man, by that time he was dead. I'm not so sure. I suppose you thought it was an easy thing for a man to use a powerful poison to get out of trouble. Only in your case, you got yourself into it. All right, all right, I doctored up a racehorse down in Florida. And I got thrown off the tracks. But that doesn't mean that I know about bows and arrows and poison darts. Well, you must have some knowledge of drugs. No. No, I bought some of the stuff and gave the horse a shot of it. You know, only a man with a criminal mind would do a thing like that, Crandall. And that's just what you've got. Now, Mr. Hero, Hero, I'm no criminal. All right. I suppose robbing the public with your crooked gambling machines and your fake racing reports is your idea of honesty, eh? That's just being smart. Sure. So smart, Sutherland was going to send you up for it. O'Hara, I'm surprised at you. I suppose you think I killed the DA to get his job. Well, his death would benefit the criminals of the city, and you're known to be their mouthpiece. Strong language, O'Hara. It's not half as strong as I wish I could use. Here we had the finest, the most fearless district attorney this city has ever had, and... Well, you know what he got. <laughs> I wish I could have just 24 hours of a free hand and I'd give this city a house cleaning and there wouldn't be anybody left to shoot poison darts in my back when I got through. Mother, oh, you're getting them all mixed up. I thought so. This goes with Ethel's present and this one goes with the tray. Now, oh, now, don't be so nervous. Oh, goodness, Mother, a girl's entitled to be a little nervous at a time like this. What's this? That's the bride, and that's the groom. They go on top of the cake. See? That's me, and that's Jimmy. Oh. In the flesh. Jimmy! Hiya, Mom. Oh, look at all this stuff. A cocktail shaker. Leave things alone. <laughs> you got away early. Yeah, I just dropped in to use the telephone. I want a story, but it won't take long. But this is our wedding night. Yeah, you think I'd forget that? Say, now, ain't that something? You like it? Oh, that's swell. Did you bake it yourself? Brides don't bake cake. Well, I don't know. I've never been a bride. You and me, all ready for the ministry. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Well, I'm hungry. Didn't you have any lunch? Well, a cup of coffee and a couple of pieces of brake lining with apples, pie, I think they call it. <laughs> and you just wait a minute and I'll fix that. No, thanks, Mom. I haven't got time. Jimmy, you should be home getting dressed for tonight. I got a hot lead on the Sutherland case, but don't worry about me. I'll be here early. Hello, Julie? Swifty there? Oh. Well, I'll call him later. Me? I'm with Alice. Hey, Julie. Don't forget, it's up to you to get Swifty here on time and with his shoes shine. Oh, you won't know me. I got a new suit. Bye. 
Now I've got to get a hold of the boss. What's his home phone? Oakmont, 2864. I'll get it. You know, you're the sweetest thing in the world. No answer. That's great. Now, don't you be late. Honey, I'll never be late as long as I live, when you're waiting for me. Goodbye, sweet. Goodbye, Jim. The ceremony is scheduled for nine. If Jimmy made headlines like he does his wedding, he'd be fired. Huh. Don't let that worry you, honey. Newspaper men lose their supposed minds when they're hot on a story. Alice, of course, you don't have to be crazy to be a newspaper man. But uh, it does help. But do I get your thoughts? Uh-huh. He's probably forgotten the minister and the license and gone back to bring them both. <laughs> I'm the present's lovely, Julie. Grand. And I'm crazy about this toaster. And from the office boy, too. Imagine. He thinks next to Swifty that Jimmy's the grandest fellow alive. Mm -hmm, he is. Uh, next to Swifty. And a little bride and groom. I'm a cute Jimmy. What's the matter? Come on, Jimmy. Pull yourself together. It's your wedding day. Yeah. Now he's all right. That must be Jimmy in the minister now. I must go powder my face. <laughs> Me too. matter? It's going to be tough to tell you this, Swifty. Jimmy? Yeah. A couple of the boys in the radio car found his body on Madison Drive. What happened? Well, it looks like they took him for a ride. I didn't want a phone, so I came myself. Thanks, Tom. You want me to tell the little girl? Tom, this is the first time in my life that I have wanted to be the first with news, good or bad. I'll tell her. I've got to get back to headquarters. Wait for me. I want to go with you. Wasn't that Jimmy? Swiftly. What's the matter? That was O'Hara. Jimmy won't be here. Swifty, what's happened? Where is he? He's dead. The police just found him. I'll be ready in a minute, Julie. I'll have to tell her. I'll tell her. Thanks, Julie. Better go with O'Hara now. I hate to leave you like this. I'll pick you up later. Checked everything. Now here's what we found in Jimmy's pocket. See if you can make anything out of it. There you are. There's a watch, a wallet, 
Tobacco pouch. Pipe. Cigarette holder. Tom. Mary. Jimmy never smoked cigarettes. I told you to stay home today. You went through enough last night. How about yourself? It's different with me. Then it's different with me, too. Thanks for the bouquet. Just to help out an old lady. Yeah, what old lady? Oh, I don't know. Just an old lady. And anyway, the flowers are for me. I just lend them to you. Cheer up. I know just how you feel. I found something in there that may give us a line on who killed him and the D.A. Yes? What is it? An article written by Jimmy a couple of years ago for our Sunday magazine section about poison darts. I'm going to follow it up. But how is this going to lead you to the murderer? I don't know yet. It must have been what set Jimmy on the trail. Oh, Swifty, please leave this to the police. The last thing I can do for him. Yes, it might be the last thing for you. Oh, Swifty. If anything should happen to you, I'd... I... I did what? i lose my job. But so would I. See you later. Where are you going? To have a talk with Alice. And then what? I don't know. I'll keep in touch with you. Hello, Swifty. Well, how are you, Legs? What are you doing here? Oh, uh, I'm managing uh, Bugs Bellatti. Just brought up a uh, publicity blurb for the sports editor. Alice, didn't Jimmy even give you a hint as to where he was going when he left here? No, nothing. You seem nervous or worried. Not any more than any young fellow would be on his wedding day. He was only here a few moments. He tried to call you. and When Julie said you weren't in, he tried to get Mr. Baldwin's home. What for? I don't know. There wasn't any answer. The boss told me to give you this, Alice. You're to take it easy for a while. Your job will still be waiting for you when you come back. Well, that is, if you want it. Of course I'll come back. Keep your chin up, Alice. All expenses are taken care of. Thank you, Swifty. Good evening, friends and foes. I hope that you will forgive me if I refrain from my customary kidding and feeble wisecracks. All this afternoon, I've been traveling a trail that I hope and expect will lead me to the murderer of my pal, Jimmy Moran. It's evident that Jimmy was at work on a hot lead when he himself met death. I'm starting to follow Jimmy's footsteps. I'm already in possession of certain facts which I am positive will sooner or later reveal the killer. I'm convinced beyond all doubt that whoever killed Jimmy also murdered District Attorney Sutherland. Hello, 
गए हैं This is an unexpected pleasure. Don't fool him. What can I do for you, Miss Waters? Mr. Casanova, I want to hire two big husky men to act as bodyguards for Mr. Taylor. I got just the guys you want. Hey, Iron Man. Yeah. You and one punch, come here. I got just the guys you want. They're big, they're brave, and they're brainy. Well, anyway, they're big and they're brave. I'll send them right over. So long. Say, can you two masterminds get over to the Globe Times building without falling through a manhole? Hey, are you incinerating that me in one punch as dumb or something? Well, nothing like that, but say, how'd you like to earn ten bucks apiece? Doing what? Bodyguard. Bodyguard? Who's dead? The both of you. Now, good night over to Swifty Taylor's office. Swifty Taylor, the poker I went three rounds with in New Orleans once? Nah, he's the guy on the radio. He's a crooner like Cassie. A crooner like Cassie? Get out of here. Get out of here. Well, you look as if you'd seen a ghost. Laugh that off. <laughs> There's my laugh. Aren't you going to do anything about it? Yeah, forget it. I've had those things before. Yes, but you've never been in a spot like this before. A guy doing the job I'm doing is, is always in a spot. But after those threats you made on the radio. Oh, uh... Worrying about me? No. I'm worried about the five dollars you owe me. Remind me to pay you. Go ahead and talk to the boss. Oh, see here, Commissioner. This paper helped put you in office. But by Jupiter, we'll blast you and that comic opera police department of yours right out of your scribble chair, unless you start getting results. What have you accomplished on Felder? Nothing. Now one of my own staff is shot down like a dog. Now I want results, and I want them quick, or I'll Bust this town wide open right down the middle. Well, that ought to get some action. Well, it certainly should. Have you talked to Julie? Oh, about those death threat notes? Yeah. Well, don't you think it might be wise and lay off as the note says? Not in a million years. Oh, I know how you feel on account of Jimmy. Now, listen, boss. Jimmy and my job are about the only two things in the world that I give a steam-heated hoot about. I'm going through with this. All right, Swifty. And more power to you. And I want you to know that this paper is behind you with everything we've got. But be careful. I am always careful. I'd hate to lose you. You won't. Yes? Have him come in. It's O'Hara. He wants to see you. Oh, hello, Sergeant. Howdy, Mr. Baldwin. Hello, O'Hara. Heard your broadcast last night. Guys who shoot their mouth off like that don't live very long. So I've tried to tell him. I'll shoot my mouth off plenty from now on. Yeah, I know how you feel about Moran. But you'd better let my department handle this case. And you'd better start handling it, O'Hara. Well, we're doing the best as we can. Have you really got a lead in this case, or are you just grandstanding? I'm not sure, but I'm getting warm. Mm. So was Moran, evidently, and now he's cold. Ah, uh, cut it. I'm going to carry on from where Jimmy left off. So you won't spill what you know, eh? Not till I'm ready. OK. I don't hold out on you like that, though. You know who that is? Sure, that's Slake Sanderson. Well, he just came out of the clink after a stretch that Sullivan gave him for safe cracking. Yeah, well, he's up to his old tricks again. He's the one that tried to rob the DA's safe last night. Why, I saw him in the building yesterday. He was trying to plant some publicity for his fighter. <laughs> well, we'll plant plenty on him, too, when we get him. Well, how do you know it was Henderson? Watchman recognized him. What do you suppose he was trying to get out of that safe? Incriminating evidence against uh, Sutherland's 13th man. Of course, you know, he was hired to do the job. The egg like Henderson wouldn't do a thing like that unless he was well paid for it. Then whoever's been paying Henderson must be the guy that killed Sutherland and Jimmy. Well, <clears throat> goodbye, Mr. Bowman. So long. And remember, follow him every place he goes. Everywhere? Every place? Every place. But we'll have to get pinched, ain't we? Sure. Pinched? What for? I got pinched for following that dame once. Yeah, he did. 
What are these? Your bodyguards. Thanks, Julie, but I can't use them. You will, too. I move too fast for them. They couldn't keep up with me. Listen, you're going to have a bodyguard and like it. I got a date with O'Hara. Goodbye, boys. Well, why don't you follow him? He said goodbye. Oh, follow him. Well, uh, here's what I wanted to show you. What is it? The evidence Alex Henderson tried to steal out of the DA's safe last night. Wow. This is dynamite. Well, there's certainly motive enough there for murder. Yes, but after all, it isn't evidence for murder. How have you got that thing, that, uh, that dart they found in Sutherland's neck? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Now watch yourself there. Don't worry, I will. Where's that stuff that was in Jimmy's pocket? Sure, right here. Here's what I want. Never been used. So I noticed. Notice how it's been reamed out? Yes. Mean anything to you? Well, no. Not particularly. Watch this. Say, be careful. That thing's already killed one man. It's going to kill another man, Tom. In the electric chair. That's the thing that killed Sutherland. I believe you're right. I wish we knew where Jimmy got it. If we did, we'd have our hands on the murderer. Let me take the telephone, will you? Sure. I think I've got some. I want to call the boss. Hello. Hello, let me talk to Mr. Baldwin. Swifty Taylor talking. Oh, hello, A.B. This is Swifty. I've got a hot lead on that Sutherland killing. That's great. Go to it. How about having lunch with me at the usual place? Oh, and by the way, A.B., uh, in case I'm late, will you wait for me? Yes, it's very important. Thanks, B.A. Well, Tom, I'll be seeing you. Well, now, wait a minute. Don't you think I'd better go along with you? Well, not just yet, but I find what I'm after. I certainly need you then. Interested now, you want to do it. Hold on a minute. Why don't you down here rehearsing? You need it. Well, I guess you wouldn't be rehearsing either if you just lost two million bucks. What do you mean, two million bucks? Didn't you see what that rat Taylor put in his column about me this morning? I'm not interested in Taylor's column. Well, what did he say? Listen to this. What millionaire playboy with wedding bells in his beret would tune him out pronto if he found out his nightclub canary still has a legal mate? So what? Well, so Winslow, the minute he reads it, calls me up and gives me the air. Well, how to tell I know your divorce from Crandall ain't legal? How am I to know? The guy picks up everything. It's about time somebody put a stop to his mouth. Maybe somebody will. Who knows? Come on, Peter, will you, Stella? I'm busy. Hello. Hello, Al. Get this. You do it my way. And if you and Gus bumble on this, it'll be tough for both of you. You understand?
Listen, Punchy, you can't follow a guy until you know where he is, right? Yeah, but we've been standing here for five hours, and my puppy's beginning to whine. So what? So what? The gal said to follow him. So we wait till he gets in, we follow him up on the elevator. That's simple enough, ain't it? Yeah. That's him coming now, ain't it? Sure. Now we follow him. Hey, Swifty. Come here a second. Yeah? Get in, my friend. What is this, a ride? Now, we're gonna have tea with the boss. Get in. What do we do now? Well, in movie pictures and books, they always jump in a taxi and say, follow that car. That's a swell idea. I'm dying to sit down. Hey! Follow that car! Hudson Taylor? No, Mr. Baldwin. What did he want to talk with me about this morning? He didn't tell me. Then by chance did he tell you why he made a luncheon appointment with me and failed to show up? What? I waited over two hours for him, thinking every minute that he'd show up. Oh. Well, what's the matter? Oh, someone called again on the phone and threatened to kill Swifty after he gets to the microphone for his broadcast tonight. Well, did you try to trace the call? Oh, but you can't trace the call from outside. I'll be in my office. Let me know the moment you hear anything. <laughs> Get me Lieutenant O'Hara at police headquarters. And hurry, please. Yeah? Oh, hello, Miss Walters. Why, no, he was here this morning. I don't know. Oh, uh, yes, he, he was to have lunch with Mr. Baldwin. That's just it. He didn't show up. And another death threat came in on the phone. Oh, Lieutenant, you've got to do something. Don't let anything happen to him. You've got to find him, I tell you. Oh. Oh. Hello, Crispy. Hello, Swifty. Nice of you to drop in. Moved your offices, huh? Yeah. Sometimes we have to. Nice place for a murder. Well, I hope we won't need to have one. Look, Louis, I thought you were too smart to pull stuff like this on me. Sit down. Don't be bashful. I've just been sitting. You want a little drink? You might need one. No, thanks. What's this all about? That's what I brought you here to find out. To see how much you know. Don't tell me you're worried. Sure I'm worried. I'm worried about you. You know too much. You talk too much, and that ain't healthy. I hate to lose my friends. Quit stalling. All right. Who killed those guys? You're asking me? Listen, I've got no time to fool around. They've got the heat on me plenty. Now I'm going to find out from you who smeared those guys. Sure you are. On my broadcast tonight. Sonny boy, you ain't gonna broadcast tonight. Listen, pal, I like you. But Al and Gus here, they don't like you. And if this will take you in there and rough you up a little bit, I may not hear it. I may be a little deaf. As well as dumb. You're leading straight with your chin, Louie. Talk to her. But look, lady, your boyfriend is stiff. Plastic. We just saw him go into the Acme Distillery Warehouse with a couple of friends and he ain't come out. You mean he's still there? Hello? Hello? Can you 
imagine she went and hung up on me. Hey, boss. Can we go to work on him? Not yet. Give him time to think it over. Well, well, the girlfriend. Is Spooky Taylor here? Yes, sweetheart. He's right in there. Come on, I'll show you. Wasn't my idea, but it's pretty good. Now, to see, Senator, you're gonna talk? On the air. Okay, sweetheart. Anytime you get hungry, just press the button and the bellboy will be right up. How'd you know I was here? Your bodyguards told me. They would. Now, there's two of us to get out of here. Well, how did you get here? Don't ask questions. Just think of some way to get out. Why? I got the broadcast tonight. Oh, why don't you give your public a rest? Listen, Julie. Look. If I might, the dart to kill Sullivan belongs right in that hole. Ooh, where'd you get that? I'm gonna spill that on the air tonight, too. Well, what are you doing now? You told me to think. You don't have to make faces, do you? It's my face. I got it. Give me a match. What are you doing, tricks? Never mind, don't ask questions. Wait for my next broadcast. and wait for the fire department? Bright girl. Well, it looked like a good idea at the time. Hey, look! It stopped raining. Let's go home. Oh, fine. Yeah, let's... Where's the fire? You're a fireman? Tell me! Here, Julie. Julie. Take these poison darts to Dave Elliott, the police chemist. Have him check them to see if it's the same poison that kills Sullivan. And you wait at the office for his phone call. No matter where I am, you get hold of me and give me the answer. Now step on it. Hurry. Okay. Hurry. Say, oh, wait a minute, will you wait a minute? Hello, boss. Swifty, where have you been hiding out? I've got all the police in town hunting for you. Tell the boys that I'll be on top of my broadcast tonight. That's great. But what happened to you? I was kidnapped by Crispy. I, I just got away. Crispy? So he's the one. Well, it certainly looks that way. And listen, boss, don't know Harold. Have him round up Crispy and all his boys. Get hold of every suspect that he's got. Have them all at the broadcast room. You hold them there for me. That's right. Okay, boss. Thanks. Say, what's your name? Taylor. Swifty Taylor. Not Swifty Taylor the columnist. Swifty Taylor the columnist. What? Got three? Thanks. Oh, Harold. Now remember, Taylor's safety is in your hands, and I don't want any slip-up. Well, I think we have everything under control. Fine. Everybody here? Yes. Everything set? I hope so. Folks, I haven't got time to toss words around. I'll tell you why you're all here, in case you're interested. At 10 o'clock, my broadcast starts. Before it's ended, I expect to fulfill my promises made to my listeners and disclose the killer of District Attorney Sutherland and my friend and associate, Jimmy Moran. I'm not a detective. I'm a newspaper man. But of this, I'm certain. Every one of you had more or less a motive to kill these men. Frankly, I'm not positive yet who did it. But I have a chain of evidence so strong that I think I can disclose the killer. I'm waiting now for final and definite proof. Quiet, please. Around the air in 10 seconds. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is station KGT, owned and operated by the Globe Times. Again, bringing you Swifty Taylor in his regular nightly broadcast. Greetings, friends and foes. Although this is my usual broadcast, I have reason to believe that you'll find it most unusual. 
I came very near not being with you tonight because a certain gentleman, for reasons best known to himself, tried to keep me out of circulation. First, I shall explain briefly how I arrived at my suspicions as to the identity of the killer. In Jimmy Moran's office, I found a Sunday magazine article written by Jimmy several years ago about poison darts, which evidently gave him a clue. He started to investigate. He was murdered. The person who killed Jimmy was forced to for the very simple reason that Jimmy had learned too much. He was also the same man who killed Sutherland. Jimmy had even found the weapon that was used in the killing. The newspaper article also gave me a clue, and I started to retrace Jimmy's footsteps. Lieutenant O'Hara and I had been puzzled by a cigarette holder that had been found on Jimmy's body. Jimmy never smoked a cigarette in his life. I tried blowing the poison dart through the cigarette holder. It worked perfectly. Some outstanding facts had already begun to point the finger of suspicion towards one individual. First, Jimmy Moran had tried to phone a person who was prominently mentioned in the article about poison darts. Second, I recognized that person's photograph in a group of those who were on the expedition described in Jimmy's story. Third, that individual sat near Sutherland at the fights. And among a most interesting collection of trophies and relics, I found the identical poison dart container pictured in the article. Before I could have the police check on this cunning little toy, I was kidnapped by Mr. Crispy. Naturally, Mr. Crispy had the best reasons in the world to prevent my appearing on this broadcast. Yes? Yes, Miss Elliot. He's on the air. Thanks, Miss Elliot. I'll take it right in. Then I was almost sure I knew who the murderer was. But to be positive, I'm having the police chemist check the dark see if it was dipped in the same poison that killed Sutherland. Just a moment, folks. I think my answer has arrived. The answer is yes. That means that the murder of Sutherland and Jimmy Moran, the man whom the district attorney was about to indict for political graft running into millions of dollars a year, the man who hired Lakes Henderson to rob the DA safe from incriminating evidence, the man who waited at lunch for me today while I searched his house, and whom Sutherland was about to indict as a 13th man is... Ah! Right Pardon the interruption, folks, but the man that I was about to name as the murderer is Andrew Baldwin, who killed Robert E. Sutherland because the late district attorney was about to expose him as the underworld leader of this city. Baldwin has just confessed and is now in the custody of police. Read the details of this murder case in tomorrow morning's Globe Times. And now, folks, for another exclusive news bombshell. Your correspondent, Swifty Taylor, is about to sign off the air for two weeks to sign on for life with his gorgeous little secretary, Miss Julie Waffles. Good night, all. Okay with you, honey? Station KGT. Send a week.